hopeless and just it would be a hopeless situation for them. And I think it's a big mistake. And, and uh, you know, I'm a very much Second Amendment person, Chris. And I know the arguments both ways very well, but I'm very much into the Second Amendment. You, you need protection. Now, you also have entertainment and you have, you know, all sorts of uh, activities and all of that. But taking that out of the picture, you know, most, most I mean, guns are used for recreational purposes. Uh, like people play golf and like people play other things and hunting. But, but beyond that, in terms of safety, uh, you know, if, if you're sitting in a cabin someplace and you're not armed and somebody walks in with a gun... I'll tell you what, I'd rather be in that cabin with a gun than not with a gun. That wow. I can tell you right now. So it's I tell you, I mean, I'm liking Donald Trump more and more. Doesn't mean I trust him, but I tell you, I'm liking him a lot more. There's so much to break down here. I want to get more into the shooting, more of the response, but what this is diverting from is they're propping the stock market up artificially right now, but the fundamentals are imploding worldwide, so that won't be sustainable. Just like they've been propping China up for a year, but it's finally unraveling and still imploding, China has started selling U.S. Treasuries to support the yuan. And an article asked the question, what if the crash is rigged like everything else? No kidding. We're also going to get into the tropical storm Erica, targets Caribbean, Florida, Bahamas on alert. Hillary Clinton obviously in deep trouble. Quote, takes responsibility, says it wasn't the best choice. Biden eyes officially running, number one in the polls. That is all coming up. But first, I was about to do this during the break here on the TV slash radio show. And I thought, why not just do it on air? Because I hadn't taken my survival shield nascent iodine yet, and I like to put it in a glass of water. I take about half a dropper once a day. That's a little more than the dose that's recommended. Consult your physicians out there and see how it works for you. Took much smaller dosages three years ago when I started this. I take a larger dose because I forget some days. I probably do it three or four days a week. In fact, I'm getting better about taking it every day, so it's probably reduced my dose. Hindsight's 2020. I just greedily put too much in there. And then I take some super vitality that's even stronger under the tongue. But I just put it in water because it really has like a cola-y taste. When you mix it with the iodine, I take three dropper fulls. You know, why not just take four? I don't know. Whatever. I'm being bad here. Uh, <laughs> in fact, somebody ran off of my secret 12 that was in here. My secret 12 was in here. Oh, so it's underneath. I can't reach it. Will somebody give me my methyl cobalamin in place? Sorry. See, I didn't really prepare this. I was loading up this glass during the break, and I thought, you know what? This is what I do at least once a day, and when I religiously do it, things get a lot better around here. Nico, I really appreciate your help. I can't really... Someone ran off with it. It's probably me. I probably wandered off with it. I probably wandered off with it. I, I don't need it. It's okay. I'll take it later. And that really is better under the tongue, not in water. But this is this is how I take it. Uh, right into the old stomach, right down the old gullet with me droogies. And so there it is. Mmm, tastes delicious. You know, when I first started drinking this stuff, it didn't taste good, but now my body loves it. It's like the first time you drink whiskey, you don't like it, but down the road, you know, it tastes like mama's milk. But uh, even though you don't remember what mama's milk tastes like, you imagine it probably tastes like the Jameson's you're drinking. But <laughs> instead of drinking Jameson's, I drink this. So, again, it's available at InfoWarsLife.com. Thank you, sir. And your purchases do make the transmission possible. And we had been sold out of Secret 12 medical-grade methylcobalamin, but it has come back in. And I tell you, talk about energy, talk about stamina. This is the real energy drink. One or two squirts of that a day, and you will feel, I mean, I certainly do. You can read the right reviews. Dramatic, dramatic effects uh, with the secret 12. So I mix those three things together, X2, super male, and the methylcobalamin. During the winter, I put winter sun in, but actually vitamin D and other systems, here it is. I should have gotten ready for this before I actually did it. It's down there as well. Are the building blocks of everything. And so much of the cheap stuff you found at the store is synthetic. Well, your body can't even absorb that. In many cases, it's toxic. You need the real unheated unpasteurized raw stuff and it will change your life see i have a big giant pumpkin head so it doesn't really look like in fact guys find the photos 
doesn't really look like I've lost a ton of weight. You can see I've lost some. I took some photos. Well, I showed myself five years ago versus now. It's night and day. From job of the hut to just a little bit overweight. But now, folks, with the shirt off, I, the six-pack's coming out. In fact, I just need to be vain, get in there and pull the shirt off, and show people the difference between three months ago. It is dramatic. We're live, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide on this Thursday edition. The original prepper is really what I would call him. The original patriot. He's been around... 25 years on air, but a decade before that, Steve Quayle will be joining us. Remember him talking about weaponized drones 15 years ago and how they were going to be coming to our doorsteps with the police. And now that was in the news yesterday. And it just sounded so crazy even back then. But uh, he, he has been quite the trailblazer. He's going to be joining us. Our reporters, David Knight and Joe Biggs, will be joining us uh, from the little town out in Virginia where the media is uh, preparing to destroy the Second Amendment if they can. And there's really no mention that he's an Obama bot wearing Obama pins who thought black people were out to get him, white people were out to get him. And he was mad about the Charleston shooting. So he struck back. Simply sickening that this is going on. But maybe they sense that the race war push isn't working because uh, Al Sharpton's having his weekday show canceled and moved to the weekends, which is where they kind of quietly shuffle people off. Uh, Piers Morgan is back, demonizing the Second Amendment. This is a guy that has armed response security at his L.A. house, mansion. He has armed security that is in the neighborhood. He has a sign in his yard that responds within one minute with guns. Why don't you just, I mean, I'd live in one of those neighborhoods if I had the money and lived out there, sure. Why not have armed security guards? But I'd have guns too. I mean, I'm not knocking if you got the money for armed security guards. Why not? Especially if you live in, you know, L.A. and there, there are robberies in those rich neighborhoods. I know folks that live out there. Uh, but just how do you sit there with a straight face saying the general public can't have guns? It's so fundamentally hypocritical when Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton or Michael Moore or Dianne Feinstein or Barbara Boxer or Michael Bloomberg or Nancy Pelosi or any of these people or Harry Reid tries to restrict the general public Second Amendment and then they sit there with a straight face saying nobody wants your guns like it's a conspiracy theory. Now, here's an article that we talked about a few weeks ago, but now I was actually mailed. The Inlander, their August 13th to 19th weekly edition. This is like the Austin Chronicle there, the big popular weekly tabloid. And it says, daring to tread with him standing on the Gadsden flags, meaning his constituents. And he says, the sheriff is scared of extremists and wants the public to be scared of them as well and says they're a danger. You read the exact quote. Why Spokane's Republican sheriff says we should be scared of homegrown extremists and the fanatical fringe of the Tea Party. Now, the reason I mention this article is it ties in with this story that Paul Watson's going to be talking about. Fort Bragg troops trained for domestic emergency. This exercise is about the home front during civil emergency. ABC 11 North Carolina reports. And reading from the report, scenarios which could all be really coming to America, and that's when the potential for martial law kicks in. You know, I have an ABC News report out of Louisiana where they go, martial law may be needed in America. And then it cuts to the very same photo that they have in that earlier report in this one showing Katrina and armored vehicles and troops riding around confiscating guns with the state police and others integrated in with the regular army. I mean, this is what's being prepared for. And again, they create enough of an economic collapse and 100 million people that are on food assistance go hungry. You're going to see an explosion in this nation. It's going to make the Great Depression, if it goes this way, we're trying to stop it, look like a heavenly event, look like a cakewalk, look like green pastures, look like a walk in the park. A 
piece of cake, whatever you want to call it. And there's this massive buildup in the Army Times and Stars and Stripes, just hundreds of articles about the military prepares to take on the Tea Party. Yes, the number one enemy on C-SPAN, Army War College. Generals, we're preparing to take on the gun owners. The, I mean, we have all this on video. And then we warn about it, and the media goes, you think martial law is coming in August and September. You believe the gun confiscation will be gun. You believe the governor will be arrested. You, be you want to kill U.S. military, Mr. Jones. We're like, no, we're reading the Army Times. Uh, we're showing local news where they admit the martial law preparations, but push it as good. Just type into YouTube clergy response teams, and, that, and you'll get different newscasts around the country where it's the same federal script about during emergencies, the clergy will work with the Army to tell you to go ahead and turn the guns in and go to the emergency center with your family. And they cuss the preacher. It's of the Lord. Romans 13, do what you're told and go to the camp. They actually say that. You've heard me play it at nauseum. I mean, it's like if I get up here and I say, I have CBS News across the country in the same script. They send federal scripts down through it. And then you trust it because it's local, but it's a federal teleprompter. It's been loaded federally. So it might as well be national. And they're like, mercury helps your child's brain and is now a nutritious part of the food group. And it helps your child's cognitive mind. Do I need to play that clip probably for the 300th time? I mean, I will. Mercury is good for your children. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to play it. Just go to YouTube. We'll do it on screen. Type in Mercury is good for you. And you can find different newscasts saying Mercury is good for you. And I remember when I saw the report, I knew it was nationally written, so I Googled it years ago, and it was all over the country that day, but local newscasters going, Mercury is good, Mercury helps, Mercury is wonderful, Mercury, it's the new vitamin C, be trendy today, you'll never talk again, but it's fun, government loves you. I mean, this is the creepiness of this. Nobody wants your guns. Nobody's going to take your doctor away. Obamacare is free. All lies. Hillary never had fake emails. Now she admits she did. The head of the EPA had to step down over it. She needs to right now. So that's all coming up. But Paul Watson wrote an article that ties into this one, and we're going to him right now. France prepares for mass unrest radicalized immigrants taking over cities, and this is in the French news. But then you ask, why are they bringing in to Europe over 100,000 North Africans and Middle Easterners a month? That's a conservative, 100,000 a month. There's 100 plus thousand people out of North Africa on the island of Lesbos. I think it said 156,000 two weeks ago I reported that. One little island's got 150,000 people on it. And in Germany, wherever, you just walk outside and there's just giant hordes of people. I, I was in Toronto last week, beautiful city, blue skies, great weather. And I'm not kidding, folks. I've seen videos of street folks in Pakistan. I mean, you could tell these were malnourished children from very young age. You could tell the disorders when they haven't gotten enough food. And they're just absolutely the scariest looking people you'd see in a Pakistan market. There are a lot of great Pakistani people. I have friends that are Pakistani, wonderful, smart, scientific, you know, merchant folks, whatever. I mean, you, you talk about bad folks from a country, you can find some really bad people from a white area, black area. You can find bad people in Mexico. I'm just saying, bottom of the barrel. And they were so shocking when I would see this walking down the street that I... Didn't even videotape the people. Well, I, I just kind of, but I mean, I'm talking wild-eyed and, and aggressively trying to sell you bottles of water or whatever. And it was just so shocking to know that just the world's collapsing and our governments are just disgorging this in along with Stinger missiles and AK-47s. That's what the Paul's going to break down. And so when they strike, I mean, how many times did I say the Stinger missiles would end up in Europe, probably France first, and would start shooting down airliners? They say that's imminent. Our government again gave it to them. And our governments go in and destroy central governments there that are even 